busy week with an amazing time. And so have fun with us, dance along, and let's worship. I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash I am born again. Forever safe in the Savior's hands You are more than my words can say I'll follow you, Lord, for all my days I'll fix my eyes, follow in your ways Forever free in unending grace Because if you are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, we lift you higher Welcome to Survivor Games. In cold weather, we use warm gear to survive. Let's see which of these survivors can put on their gear the fastest. Congratulations, and thanks for playing in today's Survivor Games. Now let's talk about another way survivors keep warm. Hi guys, we've been talking the last few weeks about survivors. So I wanted to come out here and try it, see if I could survive in the wild. You know, those guys use a lot of skills to survive, and they really rough it out. And what I've learned is that out here in the wild, it gets really cold. 
And since there's no heaters, you gotta learn how to build a fire. That's one of the skills you need. So I looked up some YouTube videos and it said that if you use two sticks, you can light a fire. So I'm gonna try it out. Hey! hey. It's really cold out here. Why don't you just turn on the fire pit? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Everybody knows if you rub two sticks together, it can spark a fire. And the YouTube video I watched said that anybody could do it, so I'm gonna do it. What? Why don't you just use matches? Matches? No! No real survivor uses matches. Okay, but it's really cold out here, man, and your fingers are starting to look purple. Yes, you're right, and it is really cold. All right, I'll try my survival skills another day. Go ahead, use the matches. All right. See if we can warm up. Want to hear a riddle? Can you do that? A riddle? Sure. Which man cannot enjoy a blazing fire? Uh, we'll say Aquaman. No, well maybe, but a snowman. A snowman can't survive a blazing fire. Can't enjoy it either. Okay, hey, can you tell my friends your name? Moses. That's perfect, because guess what? Today's Bible story survivor, he's also a Moses. What? With a name like that, that must be really cool. I cannot wait to hear how he survived. Ah, no, this is a fire. I'm not sure I could have built a fire like this with my two sticks, but this one is perfect. It will definitely keep me warm while I survive out here. You know, for a survivor, a fire is not just important for keeping warm. They also need it to cook their food, to purify water for drinking, to dry off when they're wet, and as a light when it's dark. So a fire is definitely necessary for survival. You know, when the logs burn out, I'm gonna have to add new ones if I wanna keep the fire going. But in today's story, the fire didn't act like a normal fire. It was a special kind of fire. And the Bible tells us about it in Exodus chapter three, where it talks about Moses. Do you remember Moses, the little baby that floated down the river Nile in the basket? Well, that same guy, but when he, he is much older. Will you join me around the campfire? You can sit on the floor and pretend that you can feel the warmth as we talk about the special fire that Moses survived. Now, Moses grew up and he escaped from Egypt where his people were slaves. And he went out into the wilderness where he found a wife, he had children, and he became a shepherd. And one day, while he was out in the wilderness with his sheep, he saw something that caught his eye. It was the fire that was behaving weird. It was a bush on fire, but the bush was not burning. At that point, he's probably thinking, I should call 911. See if they'll send some fire trucks out to help. <coughs> Except, I don't think they had fire trucks back then. So Moses had to get in closer and check it out. As he did, he heard, Moses, Moses. All of a sudden, he realized that it was not an ordinary fire that he was seeing, and that it was God talking through that burning bush. And God said, Moses, because the ground you're on is holy. Don't come any closer and remove your sandals. So Moses did. He took off his sandals, something like this. He knelt on the ground and he listened to what God had to say. And God told him, I've heard the cries of my people and I've seen their tears and I want to rescue them. And I've chosen you to be the rescuer. I need you to go back to Egypt and tell the Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses was not happy about that assignment. He did not want to go back to Egypt, and he did not want to see the Pharaoh. But he realized that the God who spoke to him through that burning bush was going to be with him. So if you keep reading in the book of Exodus, you'll see Moses did go back to Egypt, and he did go see the Pharaoh. And even though the Pharaoh did not want to let the people go because they were his slaves, after a lot of different weird, crazy things that the Bible calls the 10 plagues, he finally changed his mind and let those people go. So Moses was a survivor, not just of that burning bush, but also of his encounter with the Pharaoh because God was with him. You know, another interesting thing about that story is not just that God spoke through a bush, but the way the fire behaved. Why did God choose to have a bush on fire, but that didn't burn out? When logs are in the fire, they change, right? When this is over, the logs won't be there because they'll have changed into ashes. But the bush that was on fire, 
didn't change. Its trunk stayed the same, its leaves stayed the same. It was like a normal bush, just on fire, and it never changed. And that's a picture of how God is. He never changes. He always was, always will be. He has no beginning, he has no end. He doesn't change. He never gets angry. He never gets tired. He never gets hungry. He's always the same powerful God that loves us and wants to help us. So next time you're by a campfire or when you see a fire, remember that God is always with you like he was with Moses. And his love for you never changes like that bush didn't change. Okay, guys. Thanks for joining me today around this campfire. And I want you to remember to join us next week for another survivor story. And we're going to have a special guest from out of town. See you then.